Hello everybody, this is the Fine Liquids community, Pat Eckert here, your water sommelier from Germany, Heidelberg. Today we, um, first of all, we have to say sorry, therefore we were not, we were not live, we were not online, we had difficulties with Twitch, but now we will stream that show later on. So first of all, a uh, wonderful hello to everybody i'm so excited to have you all here tonight in that show or when i say tonight it's just a night for me so i know over australia it's very early in the morning in in japan it's very early in the morning and in the us it's in the mid of the day so uh korea very very early in the morning it's wonderful we have so many uh beautiful persons here in that um water tasting and i think um, it's time to say hello to everybody and I want to introduce to you or let the people introduce themselves to the audience. So let's start with um, Ruriko. Good morning, Ruriko to Japan. How are you? Good morning, everyone. I'm Ruriko Suzuki, a Japanese water sommelier. Uh, it is 7 a.m. in Japan. Let's uh, stay hydrated today. Yay. Wonderful. And now say hello to Sylvia. Sylvia, I know you are a water sommelier. I saw you over there in Athens at the Fine Water Summit. And I know that you are located in Romania. But today I saw in your uh, Instagram that you are in Switzerland, actually. Is that right? I just came back. So it was a, a photo from the holiday, but I just came back. So I was in Switzerland and also in France. All so right. It's a good uh, opportunity to talk about the French water. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Sylvia, so you are the very first time here in, in the Fine Liquids community. Um, please let me know, how did you came into the world of water tasting, being a water sommelier? So what, what was your reason there for? So it, it actually first started when I was much younger because as many of us knew before that water had taste so i was all the time i was convinced that water has taste and i was trying to tell everybody that water water has taste then uh during my pregnancy it was the only thing that could keep me alive just drinking water it was super amazing to find all the different type of taste during pregnancy where everything is super super um um i don't know the, the the flavors are enriched and everything is so much more intense and then uh as business wise we were starting because of the pandemic i am in the restaurant business and events and everything and everything was shut down in romania as it was in most of the places around the world and we were starting a new business a new type of beverage and a non-alcoholic soft drink and we were trying to do something with um, plant extract, with wild lavender and wild mint and stuff like that. It was a soft drink. And I, we, we wanted to market it, just send it out there. And I didn't know how to present a soft drink to people because we were doing events, we were doing like food stuff. And we wanted to, to educate people and i asked myself okay how can we educate them for a new drink what's the basis of every drink and that is water so then i came across this community of people like who said that water has taste and water is not just water and i was like oh wow this is where i belong this is so amazing <laughs> yeah so basically that's the journey and i'm also always looking for new concepts we are a family business we have a hotel in a um, 18th century manor house. So we are always looking for new concepts of, of, for food and beverages. So it, everything came together when I, when I found out there is something like a water sommelier. So, yeah. Wonderful. That's a, a wonderful short, yeah, uh, that's uh, a short, short, short look into your journey. <laughs> 
that it shows what I see when I when I meet water sommeliers or water enthusiasts when they fell in love with water. That that's always amazing. Thank you for for that look inside you. your life. So then I want to say hello to Darren. Um, Darren, I, I know Darren for a very long time. He he wrote, I, I think more than a year or two ago, he wrote me a message over Instagram and I thought, Who, who's that guy? He, he's doing coffee. And then this was a moment when I thought about, okay, coffee and water, I, I should think about coffee and water. And then uh, I followed him and very, very excited about all the stuff he's doing and the experiments he's doing and um, his own personal uh, way in, into this kind of working with experimenting with water. So hello, Darren. Hello to Australia. Oh, hi, Pat. Yeah, yeah, Darren, I am. I'm in, uh, in Brisbane, Australia. It's uh, Saturday morning. Um, it's uh, yeah, quite early in the cold winter. So um, of water as well, like everyone else. Um, and it's all because of my coffee journey and working with water is 95%. Well, coffee is 95% um, and I come from the background and structuring my own water for a better coffee, learning more about what mineral can do to a different part of the coffee. And, what and this is where I fell deeper into um, what water is and why it's special. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, it's really, it's really cool to see what you're doing. And this is uh, every water sommelier I, I follow or, or I see in the, I think everybody is, is creating his own way, his own style. And that's wonderful because it shows the colors of water. It, you know, everything is hided in this transparency. But inside mm -hmm. that, I think it's so much more. This is, this is really, really great. So to um, Korea, hello to Hanuel, how are you? Hi, I'm Hanuel from South Korea. Uh, this is uh, in bed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, recently I moved my company to from the general distribution company to IT company. So I joined the new auto project so which operation uh, of uh, launch uh, the app in android android os in this week so after this the conversation uh, i will share my uh, the app link but this is the first application so there are many bugs and there are many errors so if you find any errors, uh, please uh, tell me. Yeah. That sounds it's that fantastic. sounds really crazy. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. So, say hello to my um, to my neighbor and friend. You, Mike Schneckenberger. You are a water and beer sommelier. You are just sitting now next to you and Lake. I think. Yes, I do. So now it's. Uh... 38 degrees, um, a decrease of the day, and now I think it's 28 again. Yeah. And um, yes, uh, I would like to drink some water and hope the internet is well here on the lake. So I'm sitting to run outside the tent, and yeah, I will enjoy the show and please welcome the new. Yes. So and last. Least before we dive into Perrier, the historical water, I want to say hello to the United States. We have two friends from the United States, and this is uh, Glasscock from Los Angeles. I think it's 2, 2 p.m. right now over there. And we have Mr. Michael Musher, and as I know, you are in Austin, Texas. Is that right? Um, not quite. Austin is hours north of us. We are in Texas on the Mexican border. The Mexican border is just five kilometers south. Of here. 
on on the golf and very hot very very nice all right so um just what is what is um a for you as a water sommelier is it accessible for you do you have your story with that water or is it just one out of some other okay so this is my take of perrier so perrier, at least in the us it comes with a glass bottle we get plastic well, everybody else get but i get these canned perrier as well so we are fully accessible in many supermarkets and uh, perrier is a very very special water for us since we don't very get the naturally carbonated water like perrier so and that's kind of really really fortunate for us to have something easily accessible so one thing all right uh, and i'll say more topic we have the bus wonderful Good to michael uh michael michael masha founder of fine waters and so you um I, I think I can say you are the main actor in inside that fine water category, and I think you are a person. Who, so um, I would like to invite now to open to crack the bottle with us and have these first sip. Cheer with, us. and after we did that, let's go in deep this water. Okay, let's do that. Why, while we uh, pour the water in, I have to say in Germany it's not accessible. We are next, but um, we, it's, uh, they, de they do not longer export the water to Germany, so all we can get is a pee bottle, you know, so not, not really <laughs> fine, but this is all we have. So what about you, Mark? You, you don't have this water right now on your table? I don't have a Perrier at home, but what I do have, and what I drank a couple of years ago, is a Perrier, a bottle Perrier from 1934. Wow. So I was very fortunate <laughs> to discover a case of them. They were in a, in a wooden crate Whoa. with some straw in it. They were very well preserved. And we opened one of the bottles. So this bottle is empty. We opened the bottles. And believe it or not, they were still sparkling in, in the water. So it's really, really amazing to hear that you still have a sparkling water. There was a little bit of a problem with the water because you can see it's a crown cap. And under the crown cap was a little bit of a cork. So the water had a little bit of taste from a slightly decaying cork. But it was still pleasant very little bubble not strong bubble but you could definitely have some bubbles now so i had my period so now you should cheer with your period. yes cheers cheers, cheers all over. i think this is the very first time that so many people are drinking perrier all over the all over the globe together in awareness <laughs> cheers So do you want to start talking a little bit about the natural carbonation? Before, the very first thing is I was afraid because the best before end is I think 2021 and it's a PT bottle. So I was afraid maybe the carbonation uh, no longer inside, but it is. I'm very excited. It's the very first time that I drink that water. And I also told my first time. Do you have it from the or from uh, the room temperature? Yeah, I, I've got bottles here, and this is room temperature, and it's very tasty. Here is the yeah. cold one, and here is the fridge one. So I will taste all of these temperatures now in the next minutes. But this is the the room temperature one, and it's very tasty. I, I really like that water. I also have the, the same bottles like. Uh, 
um, pet for a uh, gun him. <laughs> and yeah, that's my neighbor. So morning together, and I like the smoothie taste, a little bit of sweetness, I and uh, small bubbles. I like this. And Michael, uh, water in, in this bottle of years of age and so on. Uh, I think this is the sign that water is a natural product. And also the, the, the carbonation is natural in, the, in, the, in this water. And I have at my caravan a water um, last year, drank a half of, of this bottle. And half year I found it and it was also good. It was closed and also good. Yeah, so I think natural carbonation definitely helps with the retention of the carbonation. And I think we have all had the, the, the very same experience about that. And I was just amazed. Someone just said small bubbles. Because I always had the feeling that Perrier has this very loud, big bubble. It's like a fork in, in your mouth. It's, um, so, I agree with you on that, Marco. It's um, the front, more like part of the experience is very loud, but then through the and the aftertaste, the bubbles are very, they control. Um, mm -hmm. it's, and that creates that itch of being small, but they are loud to start with. So, yeah, it's the transitions through that process. Okay, yeah. maybe it's in, uh, uh, the plastic uh, bottle, the carbonation is going outside um, yeah. three years, so, so it's from some bottles also here. Um, with a uh, strong carbonation, and they, they lost uh, the carbonation in, in half a year. What about just in your can? What are the bottles in your can? It's actually pretty bold and uh, really loud. So that's why when I pour the water inside the glass, I always want to hear the acoustic. Yeah. Yep. So that's the first thing I do. Mm -hmm. As you can see from the glass, you can also see these really bubbles uh, popping up. Yeah, I've got the big yeah. bubbles. It's almost yeah. like drinking, I don't know, this kind of pop pop candies. That's how mm -hmm. I yeah. kind of get into it. And another thing that's really so interesting about water is that it's also naturally carbonated. It's a little TBS. It's kind of... That's right. Yeah. So that's kind of one thing that I kind of really look into. It has that... Not super, you know, it's kind of medium minerality, but for naturally carbonated water, I think that's quite compared to other brands. That's a good point. It was a low sodium, so that's kind of where the smoothness comes in, even the coffee bubble. So I think that's where the uniqueness of Perrier comes from. And as Darren would say, I think it, Perrier is also a journey for hearing this loud voice, mm -hmm. but then it comes becomes much more accessible, I think, because the bubbles become a, a little bit finer. But I agree with what you said, Justin. I do the same thing to the bubble because it's really important. That's, that's part of the experience. It's not only the taste in your mouth, and the sound of the bubbles is, is, is definitely one. And I don't know if some of the champagne companies now make a little, put you put on the glass, it looks like a little uh, earphone. Yeah. I think it's cool or something. It's so I got a new a new session of water inside, and the bubbles are there. It's just not yeah. I can hear it. I can. Than a medium water. The second one uh, was in the fridge for one hour, and it's definitely more carbonization inside of that. So I can hear it, I can taste it. So, yeah. Um, yeah that's why I think it's also so important to open the table and not back in the kitchen and just bring it out there. Or even worse, you know, pour it in a glass and put a, a glass with water being poured already on, on the table. Yeah. 
So when we are talking about Perrier, we have to uh, step back into the historic of that brand. Um, just as you said, Michael, um, 34 years old, a bottle you tasted. Um, some bottles I... No, not 34, much older. 1934. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh. 1934. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, as we can see here, these um, bottled waters are on planet Earth since a very long time. And some brands started with that. Before that, it wasn't it wasn't bottled. So people just went to the to the wells, they went to the rivers and they 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 picked the water up, but they had no no bottles. And Perrier was one of the uh, first brands which started bottling before the 19th century. And this was kind of the success story because after bottling, you had the opportunity to export that water to wherever you want. And this was um, a main reason why Perrier um, was accessible for centuries, um, not for centuries, for decades, um, all over the world. So, but now, um, Perrier has the same difficulties, just like other French um, water brands, so that their sources are no longer big enough. The output is too small or getting smaller and smaller because the groundwater is going deeper and deeper. So f France is missing water from rain, from the mountains. So everything is getting more and more difficult. Um, but when you have a, a big look from from the early 19th century to right now, we see that um, a brand like Perrier did a very, very long way <laughs> and they did it to Japan. They did it to Australia. So the, the water is accessible everywhere. And this is what I, I'm really um, <laughs> proud about that water did that. And you know what? I want to um, to end this short um, journey into the historic with one thing. Sometimes we all are um, a little bit disappointed when people are not aware about water or not aware about the value of water or not about the, the, the Epicurean aspects, as you would say, Michael. But Perrier is a water where everybody would say here around in, in Europe, yes, Perrier is a very good water, you know, this is a very good water. And this is inside their brains. They know this is a very good water. So, and I just wanted to bring that aspect in because it's sometimes not even easy to um, showcase people. There is a difference between a high quality water and just a safe and a clean tap so and there is a big difference and Perrier told the people that stories that story for decades so but when I look at your table Ruriko I see you have some wonderful uh, green bottles from Perrier and what I also see it must be a designer or in an artist bottle you've got there is that right it's Murakami or what it's yeah I think she got something there. Really cool. you've, got, you've, got there yeah. you've got there four bottles of Perrier on your table. And there is this big one. Is this a artist version? Ah, this one, it? yes. So this is a little bit of 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 言われています。開会機器っていうデザインなんですね。なんかお花となんかこうニコニコした可愛いキャラクターが描かれてるんですけれども、2つあります。で、日本でもとても人気があって、すぐに完売してしまいました。私が運よく手に入れられました。Ye
it's sold out very, very quickly. Yeah. So it's really popular. Yes, I think so. But this is a, a bottle uh, I told you today uh, I, I'm having at home. Wow. Wow. <laughs> hide it, hide it, because <laughs> I, I, I bet I should yeah. never see it. <laughs> 990, 999 euros. That is yeah, 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 yeah. I believe that. Yes, I believe that. <laughs> Wonderful yeah. bottles, Rurico. Thank you for displaying those. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's in my box right now, so I cannot show, but uh, uh, I was able to access one of them in the US as well. Uh, I'm not sure if it's available in the other countries, but uh, mm. do you know anything, Pat? No, um, I, I never saw this. Uh, this artist um, bottle, never saw it before. I know that Perrier is working in um, in general with artists for these design editions, for these limited editions, but uh, I never saw that one. And um, when when Evian designer bottles are really, mm -hmm. really rarely and hard to get. So Perrier is so much harder to get because they are much more limited than Evian. So no. I don't know where to get that. It must be the same. You can access some of them, but not for a very long time. And after that, and after then, you have to pay real, real big money to to get those bottles. Yeah, it, it's an interesting concept. You know, you talked about the history, but you see, Perry was really good in establishing a brand. They were very, also very early in establishing the brand, so they had a, a big ad advantage in in doing that. But for me, things changed after Nestle bought uh, Perrier, I think in 92 mm -hmm. or 93, it's now a Nestle brand. And Patrick, you talked about that it's not so widely available in where you are in, in Europe or in, in Germany. In the US here, it's very widely available. It's, it's extremely common. And for me, it falls under the category of a gas station water because it's the water that you can get at a gas station because it's so widely distributed. So you, and I recently had an event in, in Las Vegas where I ate at a very fancy restaurant, Jose Sandre Bazaar uh, Meats. It's a Spanish restaurant and they know every aspect of where the food is coming from. They can probably tell you the name of the pig. They know exactly where the vegetables coming from. So everything is really, really curated towards local <laughs> Spanish food. And then, of course, I'm asking for the water menu. Sorry, we don't have a water menu. Do we want still the sparkling? And the sparkling version was a Perrier water. So a French water in a very, very local domestic uh, Spanish restaurant. It was about $20 for a bottle of Perrier. And it's the same water that I was buying at a gas station when I drove into Las Vegas and filled my car with the, with the water. So that's my, my gripe, especially in the US with Perrier is the the wide accessibility, which I think, in my opinion, dilutes the brand. Even so, they're trying to do events like Rurico showed us, where they have very special bottle brands. But they want to have it both ways. They want to be a, a very exclusive brand, and they also want to be a mass market brand. And I think this is where it's falling a little bit yeah. short on the marketing aspect. In Romania, I think it's the opposite. For example, so it, it is widely available. You can find it in the supermarket or online but it's the rich water so although we have lots of mineral waters in romania and you can also do what pat said like just go to the river and fill your water with amazing waters people just think of perrier like this is like the water for the rich people although the price is, the, the price point is not that high so hmm. other waters would probably be even more expensive but this is like a very cool and uh, i don't know expensive water yeah, and I think that's how they started in the in the 70s and 80s when they introduced, I think they were very early on in introducing the single servings. So yeah. you could go into a bar, exactly the, the little ones, and you mm -hmm. see even before they had the, the little bottles, and you go to a bar and you go to a restaurant and you order the single serving water and that gives you this feeling of, you know, I'm drinking something special, I'm opening a exactly. special water. How is it in Australia? Is it very, very common? No, it's not very common. Um, only sort of uh, specialising uh, whole foods or organic uh, supermarkets um, will hold this. Um, um, some restaurants have got it. Um, it's not cheap. So, for example, this bottle at the supermarket is probably around what uh, what six US dollars, and that's at the supermarket price. Mm -hmm. But um, Australia in general is very expensive for bottled water. 
I think we're number two in the world for pricing for bottled water in the world uh, per per bottle. Um, it's hard to get, but it's also easy to access if you're looking for it. If people don't look for it, they won't find it. It comes to that purpose. It's not a gas station water, but some premium uh, like supermarkets or homes or restaurants or cafes, they'll have some they serve with their food, but that's really it is. That's something you need to look for. It's not generally given to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to bump into it. Yeah. And how is it in, in South Korea? Is it very well accessible? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I want to tell you uh, about the Korean the water history. Uh, you know, the in the Japanese colonial era, uh, generation, uh, Japan developed the many infrastructures to Korea. Uh, one of the infra is the tap water, the municipal water. And so they don't they didn't allow to sell water from the nat nature because they wanna sell their the infra water. It is uh, it can be more uh, get money. So after independent from Japan, Korean government still use tap water system, and they mm. didn't allow to sell bottled water until 1988. 1988 oh. is the Seoul Olympic, you know? Mm -hmm. The Korean government wanted to sell the water to foreigners, so they allow to sell water from 1988, the, the close yeah. generation. And the Perrier is the uh, first uh, imported water in Korea, 1983. Mm. And then, uh, at the time, we don't have any culture to buy water and to sell. They uh, importers uh, didn't know they uh, where to sell this water, so they focus on the ferry to uh, and the bar or karaoke. So the okay, ferry yeah. is uh, the most popular water in Korea, but. Uh, many old people drinks Perrier at the, uh, the luxury karaoke and bar. So uh, nowadays, the Perrier uh, focus on the young generation. And then so that's why uh, uh, in Korea, uh, in Korean people don't drink 750 milliliters glass bottle in restaurant because uh, they focus on uh, the Berrye focus on young young generation. So we uh, uh, the popular is the smaller one only. And uh, I don't prepared uh, the the plain version in Korea. The lime, lemon, grapefruit version is more the familiar and popular in Korea now. Nowadays, uh, Berrye is the most. Uh, the selling water in Korea, maybe 10 million bottles a year. Wow. Yeah, and, and just what you said with that um, lime version, grapefruit version, I think this is a um, this is something you have to do when you want to enter the mass market for real. So I see that in Germany too. We got some of our major brands just like uh, Adelholzner or Gerald Steiner. Um, they do all the same so they try to enter more and more people so when you like um juice when you like tea so why don't do a gerald steiner with tea so you have more customers and i think that's right michael so sometimes brands don't decide i'm a i'm, I'm an outstanding water no i'm a mass water and so the the brand is getting more and more wavy you know so it was it was never on my focus that water and this was just because when i only get this bottle i'm not invited so when i was yeah. in in spain yeah, on on vacation i saw that small bottles and i've said oh wow cool but here in germany we don't have this feeling with that water so 
it's not not even popular here they, they stopped selling it to to germany just like other french brands too but i have a question to you J justin when it comes to water uh, when it comes to food when it comes to cooking so i know you are really experienced in that much more than i am so what would you combine with perrier what are your thoughts on perrier and food Yes. So this is something Michael also mentioned that I have to agree with all the time is fried dish. Like tempura, uh, since it has a low TDS compared to the other uh, carbonated water, I would go with like fish. I think this is something very fantastic uh, that I always talk about. Uh, shrimp will be great too, like fried shrimp. Um, so a lot of uh, uh, Japanese food I think will work out really well too. In that sense. Yeah, for me, you're absolutely right. For me, the, the main character is the, is the bubbles because the minerality is much lower than the, the other naturally carbonated water. So you can really focus on the bubbles and they're very loud. So again, the crispy food is, is, is very nice with, with it. But so this is kind of if you pair the food, but sometimes it's also nice to contrast it. So there are some foods where you can contrast Perry, where the, the food is doesn't have a lot of crunch, but you want to introduce a, a little bit of a contrast to it, then I think Perrier would also work. Sometimes with subtle fish presentations that are not crunchy in itself, but you introduce the bubbles and it gets a little bit of excitement going and you have a new experiences with the food. I also think that uh, you can use it for uh, salad or for fruits in the, the starting of your mm -hmm. dishes. Um, the water with the big bubbles, uh, um, and then the carbonation um, takes a little of, of sourness and for the for the starter, I think so. Mm -hmm. Also, no, you, a, can, good, you can you can create it with good... an aperitif. Yeah, I can also see it as an aperitif. And let's keep in mind, I think Perrier the pH is is fairly low, it's, so it's very acidic. It's so it works acidic with the, mm -hmm. it has six yeah. red or something. A five point five. Five point five. Yes. It's yeah. really one of the more acidic waters. So that's why your suggestion with a salad works very well because we put vinegar into the salad. So well, you basically have yeah. a yeah. little bit of vinegar in, the, in your water. <laughs> and yes, absolutely. It's also a good aperitif because it's not overwhelming and you can serve it. I would serve it in a champagne glass. If someone doesn't want to have a glass of champagne, they would get a glass of Perrier and would also be, be happy. Mm. Yeah, well, I've used it before with um, pairing with a lot of um, uh, Chinese foods because um, of the uh, umami and different contrasting flavors within the Chinese dish. They're not just one flavor in them, they've got a lot going on. And because of the low TDS, I can still experience the, uh, the journey of, the, of, of all the different foods. So, mm -hmm. so um, it goes well with a lot of Asian style um, Chinese sweet and sours and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah. Mm. Yeah. How, how about with Romanian food? How, how do you pair it, Sylvia? So I, I actually uh, tried at some point to pair it with like a fish roll, like the ones we had in Athens, we do it the same in Romania, like we yeah. mix it with a little bit of, bit of oil and lemon juice, and yeah. it works really nice because um, the fish roll is not that crisp when you mix it with the oil and stuff like that, but with the water, it just gets the crispiness that you need for it not to be just like a simple spread just to have it like mm. bold and crispy. And yeah, that, that one is also really salty. Also really salty. Fish roasts are also salty. So I think it goes really well with this water. That that sounds really fantastic. It's a taramo salata from, from Greece. Yeah. So you, have something, you have something similar in Romania. I can't wait yeah. to taste that. Yes, yes. Food. So uh, Darren, I have, Darren, I have a question. Uh, I think you can also use it in front of your uh, espresso. Oh, don't you can have it in front of your espresso depending on the espresso. Um, <laughs> the quality, of, yeah, that's what it comes to. It's like I find, um, if the espresso is like very bitter or something, it's probably not a good water. Um, uh, but more of a uh, an espresso from say Ethiopia or a Panama, which has got a lot more floral and aromas to it, yes, it'd be okay with that. Um, yeah. um but if you're having an espresso, say a Brazilian type espresso or a Papua New Guinea or with a darker darker roast you're going to have a lot more um uh, i don't know the uh, it's going to have a lot more more 
the body's going to be a lot heavier and i think that will overpower the bubbles because they're gentle bubbles um i personally prefer not to have sparkling water with my espresso um but that's my own personal opinion but I, it's commonly served um in in cafes and restaurants everywhere so mm. yeah it's also it's also very popular in portugal where they serve petras a naturally carbonated water about yeah. 3000 yeah. tdfs with the espresso so i think we've not talked a lot about what it goes well with i personally don't think uh, Perrier should be had with wine when you drink wine oh, I, I don't think it, i don't think it, it it works with your wine it's it's way too acidic and i think it's an aperitif but should not be with wine even so nestle is trying to convince a lot of people that sparkling water is the best for for wine it's because you know they want you to drink some pellegrino and and perry with the waters but i don't know what's your opinion i don't think it works with wine not my thing it doesn't work yep this yeah, this water doesn't still, work yeah i think still water is what needs to be worked out no, it doesn't go, with, with, it doesn't go with wine at all yeah. So, I don't want to sound too critical, but <laughs> let's address another issue: is the, the natural carbonation. So we always call Perry naturally carbonated, and I think, but with the minimum definition of naturally carbonated, meaning that the water is extracted at the same time as the carbonation is extracted, and at the bottling it's put together in the bottle. I think that falls under the still falls under the the terminology of natural carbonation. And I think Perrier was doing this for a long time, but I believe, you know, since 2019, they stopped doing this and now using uh, store-bought CO2 mm -hmm. to, to add CO2 to the, to, to the water. So I think it's also, we probably need to talk about, does this still fall under the naturally carbonated uh, clause? They removed it from the bottles, especially in the US, they say they now say, no longer say it's naturally carbonated until I think 2019 they said it's naturally carbonated. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's it's um, natürliches Mineralwasser mit Kohlensäure versetzt. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, that's it's, true. I, I personally think it's still it different to a still water that's artificially carbonated because the water was at some point used to the carbonation and there's a lot of uh, minerals for the water to hold on. But I think it's now straddling the line between carbonation added and naturally carbonated. Okay. Yeah, it's difficult. It's kind of controversial. That's definitely. And I think it's normal. When, when you are getting as big as Nestle or Danone or Coca-Cola, stuff like that, companies like that, Sometimes I think these are dinosaurs. These are um, kind of entities. These companies exist. Does not matter who person is CEO. They exist. They're doing their own reality. And I think when you're exporting worldwide, globally, you have to make decisions which cannot be in line with the historic of, of a brand. So you just have to, to make decisions for, um, to, yeah. How, how should, how could you export worldwide in that amount? How? So I, I understand them. They have to make money. They have shareholders. Yeah. So that's what it it's is all about at the end. And it's hopefully, hopefully yeah. some brands, um, will not disappear in a kind of in, in a kind of this uh, commercial way yeah but it, it, it's a struggle i i hear you and I'm, i agree with your opinion to some extent but it's really a struggle what you see with this multinational concerns is that they go into a restaurant and they tell the people we want to have our waters in your restaurant and we do whatever is necessary to to get that meaning they give you a special price they give you tickets yeah. they give you uniforms for your soccer team or whatever it takes or they give you money in order to secure a spot in that restaurant and that spot is exclusive so the reason why i could not have a spanish water in the restaurant in los angeles mm -hmm. has more to do with the exclusivity <laughs> contract that the resort signed probably yeah. with nestle in my opinion 
rather than with the choice of the chef. So the chef having the restaurant in the casino, they f fell under the umbrella. And now this is the only water. So that's my big problem with this multi corporation. They don't only want to have their water there and do not allow you to have multiple waters and a water yeah. menu that we all know our guests want in, in, in a restaurant. Yeah, I totally agree. Multinational, that's that's the point. But on the other hand, it, it's building industries. Um, Hanuel, I think, as you said, one of the first importers for South Korea was Perrier. It's now still one of the best selling waters in South Korea. I don't know the, the numbers for the rest of the world, but I think it's still very popular on, on so many places. And at the end, it is popular because of the power and the force which a multinational company, companies can, you can bring in the market. So, um, and this might be one of the reasons why it is such as popular because it's, you, you see it everywhere and you say, oh, that's Perrier, it's here, mm. it's there, wonderful. What do you think about that, mm. Hanwell? Uh, in Korea, uh, the, uh, the importers of Perrier uh, tell the media, Perrier has uh, the Guinness record uh, that is the most uh, the, the most uh, the selling water all over the world. Mm -hmm. So I searched the Guinness Book record, but I didn't search. I didn't find. But in Korea, importers use uh, the Berrier is the most popular water all over the world. But I, I and so I asked to importer. Uh, where is the sentence or the evidence of uh, how you say, but they don't reply from my ask. And so uh, in Korea, um, people think the very is the world best and this water is from Nestle. So that's trust the, the dinosaur company you mentioned. And and uh, in Korea, we divided the, the marketing uh, put target. San Pellegrino Aquapana focus on fine dining, but uh, no period in fine dining in Korea. Mm -hmm. No bigger glass in fine dining period. Uh, uh, so I think it is a strategic the access to customers, San Pellegrino and Aquafana is the good match with food. So they focus on the fine dining, sommelier and chefs, and Perrier just focus on young generation. And I mentioned uh, Korean market, maybe 10 million voters uh, every day, uh, uh, sorry, every year. But we uh, in Korea, uh, lime version, lemon version, grapefruit version, we included all. In Korea, the category of raw is all that is not beverage. It is uh, sparkling water category. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, 10 million voters is from, uh, it is uh, including lemon and lime, when, uh, when it, uh, like, amount. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, mm -hmm. could, yeah, so that is strategic uh, the marketing steps from uh, over the, uh, them. So that's why it is different amount with uh, other the water brands mm -hmm. because Evian has the natural mineral water and Fiji also. But sparkling water can change many uh, kinds of wa water. Yeah, it can do. That's putting, right. Putting, yeah. putting, yeah, some the fruits order. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why it is easy to assess. Very uh, sells <laughs> water in drugstore and beauty store, buffet, yeah. supermarket, mm -hmm. karaoke. 
well, everywhere. Michael, um, I have one question in regards to communication with brands like this. When I look at the uh, Fine Waters internet page, I see a lot of smaller family driven or um, not really big companies which are located in there. And when, when I uh, look how social media is going, I see this looks like a friendly club, just, just like family is. And uh, when I, when I um, made my experience in Athens, I, I thought, yes, it does not only look like family, it, it is family, so more or less. But mm. is there a communication possible for someone like you as founder of Fine Waters with Perrier? Is there a person talking with you? So it, it, it's a good point. So there's a huge difference. And you talked about family. So for me, the smaller companies, I talk to the owners and they still have passion for, for the water. They, you, you look in their eyes, they tell you about the water, the quality, what they want to do. So there's a lot of passion in it. I had communication with Nestle and the various brand managers. And I can tell you, they have no passion. There's zero passion. The only passion they have is for spreadsheets profit margins, yeah. market share. The whole world is spreadsheet, profit margin, market share. And they have no, they use water as a stepping stone. They get into the company with water and then they want to go to beer, they want to go to alcohol. Yeah. So no one wants to hang out with water and really shepherd it. They see this as a stepping stone. Exactly and, that, I can see that, yeah, yeah. And it's, that, it's, that's... Um... Yeah, I can understand exactly what you're saying. Uh, within the Australian public, they don't gravitate to this. They gravitate to a smaller brand very similar to this um, from uh, it's uh, naturally carbonated, a very small local brand. They would prefer that because they're, they've got the sustainability. They've got the certifications. They're local. They have uh, less um, environmental impact on them and they'd rather spend their money on a local smaller brand than something like this. Um, that's very common. It's why Starbucks have failed in Australia because people don't like what they represent. They'd rather support the local brands. So, yeah, it's yeah. small families are what's important. And I think that's, that's much better. What you also see is how stupid these companies are and how, how they're not innovating. So Hanuel told know. us about that. San Pellegrino Pan is in the restaurant and Perry is not in the restaurant. Why is Perrier not in the restaurant? Because Nestle thinks they would compete with San Pellegrino and Aquapana. And their world is still still in sparkling. And exactly. we need to be the still and we need to be the sparkling water. And nothing else should be there. That's why they push out all the brands. The consumer wants to have a choice like with wine. We don't have red wine and white wine. We have multiple wines in the restaurant. But they still live in the old still and sparkling world and don't see the advantage they would have by having a portfolio in the restaurant where you can have a San Pellegrino with a little bit more minerality. And when you have your fish dish with more bubbles, you can go to Sperry. But they deprive the consumer of it because they're still in this old mindset of yep. our world is still in sparkling. And Patrick, I can see we only have five more minutes yes. left and I've been talking all the time. So yes. <laughs> so let's come to a conclusion. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully our future will give us the privilege to have waters like this. Good water, clean water, safe water, tasty water. But hopefully we will still have water for everybody. And um, sometimes the category of fine water is criticized for you are talking about precious stuff or about fancy stuff but um let's bring it back so it is water it all begins with water and we are made out of it and we can't live without it and um water is essential and we have so many parts in the world where um this good is not safe for the people or not accessible not only bottled water just water and so i want to invite everybody to think about that topic and 
when I was younger, I, I, I wasn't sure which, which projects should I support. And I won't tell you now projects to support, but I want to say it all begins with water and everybody should have access to clean and safe yeah. water. That's the very first. If it's tasty or not, first of all, is you have ex you need access to water. Your children need access to water, and um, I invite you to look out. There are many, many wonderful projects working on that topic, and it's your decision what you what you want to do, and it's up to us as water sommeliers to um, to. To bring you as our audience um, in in a mindset to uh, realize that. So, when you got some <laughs> euros, dollars, or whatever, too much, don't waste it in buying something stupid. Keep that money. Think about which projects can you support, and if you don't want to pay any bucks on that, no problem. Your help is needed everywhere so you can you can do your own thing and um i think that's the most necessary point actually for me we we had last year we had a a, a um live stream with aqua packs and this was when when the ukraine war began and we said every we we, we said it to every big water company we said just send pallets to the ukraine and they did so i just said it you know i I did nothing else. I just said it. And they said, yes, you're right. We have to do that. Truckloads gone there. Mm. And so it's up to us. And this is what we should do. And um, I, and at, at this point, I want to um, thank all of you that you have been with me, that you have been with the Fine Liquids community tonight. Hopefully you had a good experience and you are... Uh, and, and we, we made you, we give, gave you some um, input that you are thinking about because it's not only Perrier, we just decided for Perrier today. But hey, find your water. You, you, you can fall in love with because when you, when you got that water, you will drink more water. And when you drink more water, you will be more healthy. That's all. So, yeah. And thank you all my water sommeliers. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you. And I promise for the next time I will be prepared with all that technical stuff and everything will work fine. This was the very first and the last time that this thing happened to us. Yeah. Um, I wish you a wonderful day, a wonderful night, a wonderful week and stay safe, stay lucky. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Showtime.